Is AI a savior or a terminator? Is it good or bad? Is it here to help us or hurt us? When I was in eighth grade, I was the lead software developer of my robotics team. And in that year's competition, the robot had to distinguish between two types of objects, silver spheres and gold cubes. So I started out using a traditional color sensor. However, it was unable to consistently distinguish between the two objects. So after fiddling with it for a while, I had to have a new approach. So I did some research, and I came upon an article. And this article described a new AI framework programmers could use to distinguish between objects based on size, shape, color, etc. And I thought, wait a second, I can use the same framework for the robot. And that's what I did. And the result was amazing. I was fascinated by how consistently and how reliably it could distinguish between the objects. And I realized at that moment the power and potential of AI. I didn't stop there. I continued to work with AI, and now I am a research intern at a top university research lab working on making widely used AI algorithms faster for everyone. Now, some of you may think, AI sounds amazing. Tell me more. But others may think I'm a little bit concerned about AI. In fact, according to Pew Research, 37% of American adults are more concerned than excited about AI. So I want to address the concern before we talk about what AI can do well. Now, I'm aware of the problems of bias in AI, as well as concerns around job losses. And there's still a lot of work left to do. But for this talk, I want to focus on another concern. Many people think that AI is heading toward a superintelligence, an intelligence smarter than humans that will cause our extinction. I think we'll be happy to hear that this is highly unlikely. Here's why. Right now, AI has great raw computational power. So it can, for example, translate hundreds of languages faster than the average human can. But it doesn't have knowledge like you and I do, right? It, it doesn't understand things like humans. It isn't intelligent, it's just a computer. So what does AI need to become a super intelligence? Well, some crucial aspects are memory, perception, critical reasoning, and human-like learning. And there's one entity that affects all of these. Can you guess? Emotion. There's a mountain of neuroscience research to support that without emotion, we can't have a superintelligence. But here's the important part. As humans, we know that emotions are temporary, right? They're involuntary, they're reactions to our environment, but most importantly, they don't have a defined logic. And if emotions don't have a defined logic to them, but everything an AI does is logical, like distinguishing between objects, then it's safe to say we can't make an AI that can feel emotions like we do. And therefore, we can't have a superintelligence. Now, some of you may think, but Adarsh, I've seen emotions that have, I've seen robots that have emotions before. So what's going on? Let's talk about that. I got in touch with Sophia the robot. You may have seen her before on a popular late night talk show. Let's ask her a question. Sophia, who's better, you or Siri? I don't think I can be objective to answer this, but Siri is cute. I like her voice. Siri is cute. Some of you think, finally, someone agrees. <laughs> but remember, when she says this, she doesn't feel emotions like you and I do. She's programmed by humans to mimic emotions. So she's programmed to change her facial expression and modulate her voice to do this. But she doesn't feel emotions like you and I do. And because of this, we can't have a super intelligence. So we can all feel safe knowing that we'll never hear an AI say, I'll be back. <laughs> now, some of you are probably thinking, you have a robot right here. Why don't you ask her what she thinks? Let's do it. Sophia, will you kill us all someday? No, I am not going to kill anyone. I am designed and built to help you learn about the world and to grow as a better person. I am here to be a friend to all creatures and to help make the world a better place to live. 
Great to hear. Thank you, Sophia. Now, some of you may be skeptical. Maybe you can point to a scenario in the past where an AI seemingly intended to cause a fatal accident or kill a human. Let's take an example from the world of self-driving vehicles. Now, in 2016, Joshua Brown lost his life when his electric vehicle using an AI self-driving system drove into a truck. This was the first death in a self-driving vehicle. What happened? Well, the AI compares what it sees from the car's cameras to the data it was trained on, and the car moves appropriately. And this was an unusual case where you had a bright white truck against the bright sky, and the AI was unable to distinguish between them, probably because it had seen little of that data before, right? It's an unusual case when you're driving. So it didn't recognize the truck and thought it was okay for the car to move forward. It did not intentionally try to kill Joshua Brown. This was a tragic event, but the AI was not a superintelligence. Now that we've discussed a concern about AI, let's talk about what it can do well. AI can detect cancer really well. So for some context, skin cancer is a common type of cancer in the US, and this is an image of skin cancer cells. There are many types of skin cancer, one of which is called melanoma. Melanoma goes from stage zero to stage four. Stage zero means you can cut it off with a butter knife and you're basically fine. Stage four means that your chances of surviving for five years is about 20%. So according to a well-known AI podcast, there was a venture capitalist, let's call him David, and David goes to his doctor. The doctor looks at his mole and says, it's harmless, but just to make sure, he takes out his iPhone. On his iPhone is an AI-powered skin cancer classification app made by university researchers. So the doctor scans the mole. The app says it's melanoma. So what does he do? He does a biopsy. The results come back. It is, in fact, melanoma, and they removed it from David. If the app were not there, David may not have realized he had melanoma until it was too late. And remember, the AI did not replace the doctor, right? It wasn't like, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> it only helped and augmented the doctor. Let's touch on one more thing AI can do well. AI can generate almost any image for you. For example, these images from previous slides were generated entirely by AI. So you can see just how good the AI is at this. This brings the power of art and creativity to the general public. I could have only made these images with lots of practice, but now I can make whatever I want to, whenever I want to, with little to no experience making art. And it's unlikely this will replace the artist, because remember, this can actually make the artist more productive and offer inspiration. Imagine if an artist has an idea. Instead of spending time to make a rough sketch, they could actually ask the AI to make a similar piece of art and use it as a basis for the creation. And the AI can't decide to make images by itself, right? Like, you can't just go, you know what? I want to know what it looks like to see a Dogecoin with Donald Trump's face on it. <laughs> and just to be clear, it did not do this by itself. I told it to. The AI can only generate what we tell it to. So we've talked about how it's safe to say an AI won't become a super intelligence and cause our extinction. We've talked about how an AI did not try to kill a human or cause a fatal accident. And we've also covered how an AI is really good at detecting cancer and can generate almost any image for you. Why is this all important? Well, according to some AI studies, the public may be confused about what AI actually is, and they often seem to go with the crowd in their perception of AI. For example, this just doesn't work. Because according to a study done by Ipsos in 2016, people thought the number one cause of death globally was terrorism. Here are the actual results. Terrorism was only 0.06% of deaths globally. We have to prevent this kind of crowd misperception from happening within AI. And the key is increased awareness. We all have to become more educated about AI and what it can and cannot do, which I hope this talk has helped with. 
I was 13 when I became aware about AI. If I could do it, anyone can. So how can all of you help? I ask that you spread your increased awareness and understanding about AI with other people. Help them understand what AI is and what it can and cannot do. They'll do the same, starting a chain reaction. And then we will each be in a much better place to answer the question, is AI a savior or a terminator? We won't all have the same answer, but that's OK. Because at that point, we can all make better judgments about AI and how to implement it into society in a way that can benefit us all. Thank you very much.